and we're live what's up everyone i was i've been working all freaking day i have a course page where today's lesson is about anti-nutrients in food now sorry if it's a little fuzzy and glitchy because still my wi-fi is not perfect but it's working i wanted to i got this idea because somebody asked me what are the the stephanie approved food list can i get it on your website and i'm like well that list is super old so let's start the conversation with what not to eat and why and go over some anti-nutrients and foods, what they are and what to not eat if you've got little inflammation or a low absorption of minerals problem. Now, I'm going to pull up this image because I think it's fabulous. Okay, you see that? Anti-nutrients. And you can see some of the anti-nutrients in that image, which are like onions and mushrooms and beets and beans and all kind of weird stuff. But I wanted to go and sort of talk about it more in detail. Now, let me pull up over from my course page. You guys, I actually do this awesome course. Uh, you can sign up for it at stephanieperson.com where I go over keto omnivore, low carb, high fat, where you're still starch based, but low starch and also uh, high fat carnivore. Okay. I don't just do one diet for you guys anymore. I do keto omnivore. That's where my lane is. But for you guys, I think that now it's important to understand where your body does the most repairing before just going straight to carnivore or straight to keto omnivore or vice versa, or even low carb, high fat. Because some of you guys just can't take the carbs at all because your hypoglycemia is so bad. And I've had two of you guys this week. I also do consultations. You can sign up through stephanieperson.com, but I digress. Let's go into it. An anti-nutrient is a plant chemical. It's not like a chemical in a lab. It's the natural, you can say it's the pesticide that plants have to protect themselves. Boom. Okay. So not all plants are good. Let's just put it this way. All plants are poisonous. All of them, yes. But at different growth stages, they have they have less, there's different levels of this poison. And the reason why, let me go back over here. The reason why plants are can be poisonous is because they're trying to survive. Just like you and I, they don't have teeth or claws, but they got some chemical chemicals that'll jack you up. Now, a lot of you guys come from vegetarianism and, and more completely horrible veganism. And you don't even realize that over time, your gut wall and the cell lining just begins to break down to a thing called ages, which is advanced glycation end product because constantly exposed to the anti-nutrients of plants because we're eating them 365 days a year, people. We ain't supposed to do that. We're supposed to take a break during the winter months, the non-growth growing stages of most plants. Now, let's go more deep into this. How do these plants, what are they, what do they do, and how they jack us up, right? And then next week, I think I'm going to put together a step approved list. So when people ask me, they can just go to this video and check out for the video that I make on what food you actually can eat and why. Now, let's see here. We are right here. Okay. So anti-nutrients in foods can rob your body of certain nutrients, especially minerals. They can also create inflammation. And they can create inflammation and also deposit certain types of inflammatory substances like crystals or stones in your liver, in your kidney. They can put them in your gallbladder, your breasts, your vagina, like they can put them everywhere. Some of these really awful things like oxalates. But let's start with just the idea of anti-nutrients, which pretty much just damage the body in some capacity. If you're eating too much of them, too many of them, doing things like smoothies and green smoothies and um, just going to town on plants, especially raw. If you guys are having health issues, I always recommend getting off salads for at least a month or until you heal from these histamine, latent, like slam your body to the ground type of anti-nutrients. Now, phytic acid is in typically in nuts and seeds, you guys. They rob your body of minerals. So should I go to, let me change this, move this image around. So as you can see, here are some lists of anti-nutrients. 
Um, yeah, you can see them here in the uh, chickpeas and peas and definitely tomatoes, but let's see here. All right, uh, 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 uh. we'll just go back to this image. Okay, so um, phytic acid is in nuts and seeds, uh, like almonds. They can also be in uh, grains, obviously with wheat and, and rice and tubers and potatoes and turnips and beets and carrots, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so be careful if, to not eat these foods in excess. Um, so, of course, phytic acid can rob your body of iron, zinc, calcium. And this creates mineral deficiencies. And that's why you see people with crackling nails and, like, their hair is all fracked up. Their skin's all nasty. They have inflammatory reactions, like broken blood vessels around the nose, all kind of stuff. Um, now, what our, what our hunter-gatherers do is they try to soak these things in water, but even in the soaking process, you're still having phytic acid in nuts. People, so people are like, well, what if I just soak my almonds? I'm like, no, just stay away from it. Our guts are destroyed. We don't have the strong guts as hunter gatherers did. Um, let's see. So people say, well, what about sprouting? But it's, even in the sprouting process, you're still having issues with phytic acid. Even though they're supposed to break down phytic acid, it's still a problem. So also fermentation of organic acids formed during fermentation can promote phytic acid breakdown. This is some of the ways that people try to get rid of it through fermentation. That can work. That's a lot better than just the, um, the sprouting of seeds is the, is the fermentation, but I still wouldn't ferment like wheat. Don't go there. Let me see here. Um, so also the, the, the in, if we talk about lectins, lectins can, can uh, bind to certain sugar mo molecules and they create this binding to certain um, molecules. Bind, this binding process can call, cause inflammation and uh, it creates advanced glycation end product, like I said, which is the damage, especially of the lining of the cell, it breaks it down. And that's where you see aging, where people are just looking haggard and swollen and puffy and saggy jowls and busted up collagen, all this kind of stuff. So lectins are, um, they're, in, they're in weird type of foods, right? Lectins are in peanuts, but we're not eating peanuts on these sites. Tomatoes are a big problem for a lot of people. Cucumber, melon seeds, goji berries, um, bell peppers, edamame, peas, and zucchini. Yes, yes, I know, it sucks. Um, you might notice bloating, gas, cramps, abdominal pain, swollen joints, fatigue, tiredness, skin rashes, and that could be a ton of stuff like candida and histamine, and eczema, but just got to discern, distinguish between all of these different ailments that you're getting through foods or a busted gut, which is holes in the gut wall. Hormonal fluctuations and nausea are all part of the lectin overload. Um, let's see here. Nightshades. We've heard of nightshades. You know, we think rooted vegetables and tomatoes, definitely. That's why Italians made pasta sauce because they took off the skin and the seeds, which are really poisonous to people, the skin and the seeds to make the sauce. And then people stopped, stopped having issues from these tomatoes, which are gnarly nightshades. So they can block iodine from entering the thyroid uh, gland, especially when consumed raw. They also have an inflammatory response to chronic conditions like IBS, irritable bowel disease, arthritis, psoriasis, and thyroid problems, people. Tomatoes are really bad if you have a thyroid issue. Um, they can be in bell peppers. They can be in sweet potato, eggplant, mushrooms, celery, beets, okra, carrots, uh, zucchini, tomatoes, as I said before, and mushrooms. Uh, they can have a gorgogenic effect, which is blocking iodine into the thyroid gland. And also cruciferous vegetables can have a gorgogenic effect, which are spinach, clearly, and bok choy, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, Chinese cabbage, collard greens, 
horseradish, kale, mustard greens, radishes, and uh, rapeseed, ruta, rutabaga, and turnips. So all of these things have to be cooked really well. Even if you have a thyroid problem, you can still eat these cruciferous or um, goitrogenic plants. Just cook them really well. Don't eat them raw uh, or use a pressure cooker. They mess with TSH, specifically TPO. Let me see where they interfere with the thyroid peroxidase, TPO, and enzyme which attaches to iodine. So that's how we become iodine deficient. I mean, people get that thick neck and that thyroid sort of popping out, the neck getting big. Um, let me see. Let's talk about ox oxalates. And I wrote down for my course group, this is like needles, glass, and shards to the body. And they interfere with the ability to the thyroid to produce hormones. Uh, yes, the oxalate crystals can uh, enter your kidneys, your biliary duct system, your kidneys, your liver, your gallbladder, your breast tissue, your joints, muscle, eyes, vagina, your vulva. I mean, they can get into your bladder and it feels like a bladder infection. Be careful for oxalate. So the foods that are obviously spinach is the worst. And we've got kale, we've got dark chocolate, we got stevia, it was loaded in it, almonds, beets, navy beans, raspberries, dates, and coffee, cranberry. Yes, I said coffee, people. Mm -hmm. Bone broth. Yes, bone broth. I said it. Definitely uh, the uh, collagen powder because the animals chew on a lot of oxalate crystals. I mean, oxalate rich plants because believe it or not, people, cows just don't eat grass. Same as my horses. They eat lots of stuff. You see, see a horse go and grab the trees and you know, grab some some uh, tree tree not branches but the leaves and yum, munch on that. Let's talk about tannins. Tannins or I want to talk about tannins and teas because people are doing like the coffees and the teas. So tannins rob your body of minerals pretty much. And the worst is black tea. And then we got green tea. Yes, honey, I said it. The caffeinated teas high in tannins. Um, and also anything that has a, ta a tea that has a bitter taste. So these are the, the leaves that come from these types of teas are high in tannins with a bitter taste. Like black tea, like I said, and green tea. And they block your body of iron. So a lot of women who are iron deficient and you're already menstruating women losing iron, it's a bad look. So they're in black tea, like I said, they're in red wine off. Also coffee, grapes, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries. These are all people who are doing low carb, high fat, not carnivore or keto omnivore. They are also in olives, uh, and chocolate, like I said, they're less in cacao butter, which is the white chocolate. Now let's talk about salicylates. These are in uh, sali, salicylates, whatever, salicylates, <laughs> broccoli, cauliflower, your cucumber, mushrooms, radishes, spinach, zucchini, all the containment amounts of salicylates. Um, they're in eggplants and bell peppers, tomatoes, and um, they create uh again inflammatory responses like itchy and rashes and burning eyes and headaches and all kind of stuff there are more details this is where joining my course would be a very good idea because i go very much uh, deep into which foods to avoid what foods to consume why how to safely try to get rid of the oxalate buildup uh, the inflammatory responses from being a vegan or eating a lot of plants or salads or smoothies or whatever. People who develop histamine intolerance, which is like my big, huge thing. How a lot of these plants will create allergy symptoms where you, then you st it starts to cross react. We can now not eat eggs and you cannot eat um, uh, butter. Or, you know, you can't do avocado if you don't have a legit anaphylactic reaction, which is a, a severe allergy to something like a uh, avocado and if it's just a sensitivity i teach you how to get back over here so you guys can see me yes i teach you guys how to strengthen that gut wall so you can absorb your nutrients without them constantly being robbed balance your electrolytes that's also in consultations and this is what i do okay this is what i do this is why i tell you guys to be careful on these diets not everybody responds the same People will do this. They will do like they will cut out all these plants and do strict carnivore. But the problem is now a lot of you guys who need the prebiotic fiber won't get it. 
now a lot of you guys who are dealing with diarrhea will have an increase of diarrhea if you guys are having IBS. And then there's a problem with diamine, oxi diamine oxidase and N-methyltransferase. These are enzymes that your pancreas can make and your thyroid and kidneys that will break down histamine. And so you're just swollen, 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 swollen. You don't know if it's poor lymphatic problems. You don't know if you're reacting to food. Um, often you don't know that it's just a weak gut wall. So you have holes in the gut wall. Then on top of that, you have some of these things like tannins and teas or you're drinking a lot of tea uh, or coffee, which can rob your body of these minerals. And then that's why people are like, I feel terrible. I feel inflamed. I feel tired. I feel like my skin is falling apart. I feel like I'm getting dark circles under my eyes. My candida is going out of control. I've got weird pain everywhere. I can't sleep. I got restless leg syndrome because a lot of you guys cannot absorb magnesium or calcium or even convert vitamin D in the sun very well. And a lot of you guys are consuming too much of the foods that your body can't handle, which is why I tell people you have to experiment with starting with tiny amounts. If you have a, if you know full on that you're having a problem with a certain plant or you're suspicious, you gotta take it out, you gotta do some experimentation and add it back in very slowly by doing tiny amounts, even a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon, go up to a tablespoon, then three tablespoons, then a third of a cup, then a half a cup, then a whole cup over time. And this is how I teach people how to get back on these foods. Yes, I work with a lot of clients who can now start eating a lot of the foods they were not able to eat before. I'm going to have a conversation with a guy who's a carnivore guru who has his journey. I had, an, I had a talk with him. I'm going to have another talk with him so he can explain why he chooses to go off carnivore because instead of healing the gut, over time, it starts to rebound and hurt the body. A lot of these gurus don't understand this because that's not their mantra. They're so fixated that carnivore is the best thing since sliced bread. And then they're not paying attention to some of the hiccups that people are developing, or they may not even rec rec recognize what a hiccup is. Now with me working with thousands of clients over the last 12 years, it's, you can see it. It's like, I just deal with these clients every day, every day, every day, blah, 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 and just like, it's so easy to see it. But if you don't do that, if you just started being an MD guru on the internet, you're not going to see it. It doesn't matter that you've got MD next to your name. You are not going to see it. So I've been sitting and chilling and I put more of my time towards my people rather than advertising. And it's kind of bad because more people would find me. I wouldn't be so shadow banned if I would just go and promote more. I just feel like, for so long of this journey, I felt like I needed to learn more first before starting to give advice to people. And that is the reason why I do all these. Be careful for carnivore keto. Standard American diet, I don't care what you eat or what you do or what you put on your skin or how you sleep because I just don't cover diet. I also cover circadian rhythm. I'm covering hormones. You know, I'm a 50 freaking five year old woman, right? And teaching people how to balance the hormone. Women, it can be done. You must protect that adrenal system. You must, you must, you must. You must absorb the right nutrients to then make the hormones to keep your body in a homeostasis so you can build muscle without taking HRTs. It's a process. You have to poop out that estrogen if your liver is overloaded. That's a big, huge organ that a lot of you guys don't consider. And you guys are sitting there doing carnivore and you're just doing meat and salt and you're doing too much meat or you're doing high fat carnivore now, but you don't know what the macros are. And you guys are still afraid of fat and asking, why am I going to eat fat if I'm trying to lose weight? I'm like, oh my God, you guys don't know the science of ketosis. The reason why I'm lean on a lot of fat is because I'm in a state of ketosis. It's not a mythological creature. It's not the tooth fairy. It's not Santa Claus. It's a real thing. But if gurus do not take the time to start learning about it and really understanding that everybody's body, everyone's body has different levels of damage and responds differently, then they're not going to know. They're just going to be like, eat this way and you'll be amazing. It doesn't work that way. Energy. My energy is really coming back after moving here. I had my ass served. I popped out of ketosis. I'm going to do another video about it and really went through hypoglycemia. Did that when I left California to Texas and I knew it was going to happen again. And sure enough, it happened because the stress was real people. So don't think that my life is cushy and fuzzy, warm and so easy because it ain't. It ain't. <laughs> it is not. Um, if you guys want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com. Comment below. Share this content so people can start finally finding me. Take the link and go, hey, people, check out Stephanie. Um, 
hit the thumbs up so the algorithms pick up my channel. When I first started this years ago, if you just wrote K-E-T-O -E Keto into the search engine, all my videos would pop up. But there are so many gurus now who don't do their due diligence and diligence and try to figure out what's going on. And some of them, and I've been saying this for the years, this is not nothing new. Sometimes they have pockets and nuggets of information, but then spiced with a bunch of misconfusion, misconfusion, that's another word, confusing stuff that's hard to understand or they just get, get it wrong. So I'm going to keep going hard on this, on the, in this genre of being people being confused. And the reason why I do do that or why I chose to do content like this, and I'm doing a real people with real stories talk podcast because I want the people to tell you. Everybody's like, oh, but this guru said this and this guru. Forget the gurus. Let's see what real people say, <laughs> including myself. If you have to uh, include me in the forgetting the gurus, then so be it. But you guys must do your own research and really learn how the shite goes so you can have the energy, right? So you can decide to move out of a city and buy land and learn how to, to, to build a freaking house on your own. The electrician was like, I'm going to give you a deal, but you are going to learn how to do this with me. I am not going to wire that. You are not going to just pay me to wire this house. I don't got the money anyway right now, but he's like, uh, he goes, you are going to do it with me. And I'm like, yes, let's go because I need to learn this stuff. I'm not going to sit on my privilege arse, my ass and just pay for things to be done. And that is the reason why my life is not cushy and warm and fuzzy. I work my freaking ass up and round and juicy and fabulous and Benita Apple bum. You got it on. It's amazing <laughs> to be. I want to do more videos about getting older, but still being young and like, like fearless and strong. And, you know, we all are going to age. I'm not completely immune to aging, but at least I want to age at my rate. Because I don't want to like fall apart to where I'm like, I'm just too tired to do anything. What kind of life is that? And then and then I get these messages. I can't leave. I've got this issue. And I'm like, everybody has choices, especially here in the U.S. So make sure you make them. I hope to inspire a lot of you guys. And I'm going to start to do workout series as well, a building series. There's so much to do. I got to put a well on this property. I've got to fence the rest of the property. I'm thinking about doing a retreat where I have a help me build the fence, but also a two day retreat. So I'm going to look around for places to actually do a retreat inside and I'm out energy, Stephanie person.com, Stephanie, the business person on my Facebook fan page and Stephanie ketogenic on my Instagram. Me, if you want to see me do daily content, and I'm out. Don't forget to comment below and tell me what you'd like to see. Peace. It's a beautiful day.